What's happening Hardscapers? Today we're going to be talking about retaining wall construction, specifically tiered retaining wall construction because this wall in behind here, there is some waves in it, there is some signs of early failure, though it looks like it's been here for quite some time. But with tiered retaining walls we have to be very careful about how we construct them and what goes into their engineering. Let's get into this. So as you can see here, we've got a two-tier retaining wall. And essentially, when you're building a two-tier retaining wall, you're looking at the load above it, as well as whether or not they should be built independent of one another or together as a single retaining wall. And there's a very simple calculation for this, but there's many other factors at play. Now with a two-tier retaining wall, essentially, if the top wall is two times the height of the bottom wall beyond, they can actually be built as separate retaining walls. But in this case, the height of this wall is not two feet to the next wall up there. So essentially, these walls should be built as a single retaining wall. That's what it gets into when you're getting into tiered retaining walls. So with this, essentially, this should be built and engineered as a single retaining wall structure built dependent on one another, as opposed to building a single retaining wall and then building another single retaining wall on top of it that's independent of the structure below it. This lower retaining wall actually has to take into factor the load that is being placed on top of it of the upper retaining wall. So that's what needs to go into the engineering for this as opposed to building two separate structures. So whenever you're getting into a retaining wall in our area over three feet, it actually has to be engineered and stamped. But especially if you're getting into a retaining wall like this, it definitely needs to be outside engineered beyond what the manufacturers of these blocks have for engineered drawings. Also, when you look straight on this wall, you can definitely see some curving happening, especially when you look at these caps. And I don't think... So you can see we've got a drainage pipe. Now, this one actually has a sock to it. And these actually should not have any socks on them. And it does look to be perforated as well. And this actually should extend about six to eight inches beyond the wall so that none of the water gets into the footing and just causes some settling and movement of the gravel. But it is good to see that it looks like they've got some along here. They've got one up there as well. You can see they got one there, they've got one there. Now I don't see any geogrid poking out the face of this wall. And with commercial projects, you'll typically see that being exposed to show that they included geogrid so that if anything were to happen, they could come back and say, no, there's geogrid in this layer. But in this, we don't see it. There is a wall further down that I do see it in the top area up here, tying in those larger retaining wall pieces. But in this one, I don't see any at all. Here we go. We see some geogrid poking out here. So now we know that this lower course at least has geogrid. I don't see it anywhere else moving up this wall, but at least right here and where it should be in that kind of initial course, you definitely see the geogrid poking out. And I'd be interested to know whether or not there is a buried course underneath this one. And it does feel like there's something there. So we've also got a embedded course here. Now here's something that helps the wall in the way it was built. You can see that each of these blocks are set back a single notch. So the wall is actually moving upwards on an angle. This is called a setback and this creates a batter on the wall. And what the batter does is it helps to allow this to be built taller using this specific product. And essentially they're engineered with these ridges underneath them that lock into the one below. So you can actually see they use glue here to glue this. And really with a retaining wall, you don't need glue as long as it's built properly. A seat wall, you do need glue. But with a retaining wall, you shouldn't with the mechanical connections that the retaining wall block has. Now a good thing with this retaining wall is the corners are actually built really strong. So you can see we actually have a double piece. This one hasn't been split. So it's a double piece. It's been rock faced to show that chiseled edge there. And then this is the seam to the next piece. And we have a one third there to the next piece seam. So this one has actually been tied together nicely 
moving up this corner, which really adds the, to the strength of this. But one thing I see here in this corner, which is so crucial, we actually don't even have an embedded layer underneath this. So this, you can see actually the base, the A gravel here washing out through this corner. We've got our embedded course there, and I'd be interested to know if there's another embedded course below this, because with this high of a wall, I would hope there would be. But here in this corner, in such a crucial area, we've got no embedment and we're getting that washout of the base, which will lead to eventual failure of at least this corner, if not further up the retaining wall. You can see looking straight on this wall that there's some definite settling and heaving. The lines just are not as straight. Now this is probably at least 15 years old at this point. Honestly, this lack of embedment at the corner is really surprising to me to see, especially with a wall holding up such important structures as houses. It's uh, pretty important to have that embedment, especially on such a crucial part as the corner. And even with this corner block, you can see it's actually upside down. So the ridges here are shown in each single one. We've got more glue on this corner, kind of holding it together. But essentially this should be a smooth top with one, two ridges here for this. It's kind of like you see here, two ridges not upside down where every single ridge is shown there. We've also got efflorescence showing on those top two courses, which look like they've been added actually after the fact to get an extra little bit of height. Now, typically that might be indicative of some drainage issues in behind the wall, but being that it's only happening on those top two courses, perhaps just that's just an issue with the blocks, especially when it comes to the corners, the drainage area in behind them should actually be extended further than that minimum 12 inches inches in behind it and actually the drainage area should be measured from the face of the retaining wall out so it should be 24 inches from the face of the retaining wall so this is an eight inch block so that would mean that we're 16 inches of drainage material in behind this wall moving all the way down but at the corners especially that should be extended outwards and into this area further depending on the engineering i'm not going to dig down into this to figure out if there is drainage and proper adequate drainage in behind it as you can see i know that they used a gravel for the base material for this as we saw it washing out there but it would be interesting to know what drainage material was used a lot of good things with this wall and how it was built but a lot of bad things and it's showing its signs with that i'm just using this as a way to show you proper retaining wall construction especially with a tiered retaining wall and especially in a commercial area holding up such static loads such large static loads that it will experience in its lifetime i hope this video has helped you for whatever reason if you enjoyed this please give it a like comment below any questions that you might have again we have a members only platform with how to hardscape that you can check out if you want to learn more about building retaining walls link is in the description below also the how to hardscape podcast tackles subjects along how to hardscape and owning and operating a business so definitely check that out and subscribe to my youtube channel for more hardscape content thank you so much for watching